Okay, okay, okay. My bad. I know that the introduction is a little bit dramatic, but I caught your attention, haven't I? Hey crew, I'm Lexi. I'm an astrologer and a tarot reader, and I'm very happy to come at you today with a video on Lilith. In this clip, I'm going to talk more about the astrological Lilith rather than the mythological one. I'll predominantly insist on Lilith's transit through the 12 astrological houses and through the 12 zodiac signs. And I'll predominantly speak in this clip about my experience of using her in my personal birth chart interpretations. All this being said, let's get into it. Let's find out who Lilith is. Is she a demonic angel or is she an empowered feminist icon? Let's see what astrology has to make of it. The main issue that we have with Lilith is the fact that we have such little information regarding who she actually was. She initially appears in Semitic folklore as a force of pure evil. Some texts associate her as being the first wife of Adam, who rebelled against him because she understood that both herself and Adam were created out of clay. So if they were both created out of the same material by God, thereby they must be equals. Apparently, Adam did not sit so well with this interpretation and wanted to dominate his wife and she broke out of that marriage and apparently ran into the desert to copulate with beasts. Some texts actually say that she fell in love with the brightest angel in heaven, which at the time before the downfall was Lucifer. And after their downfall, they wandered off into the desert and spawned a lot of monsters and beasts. I mean, when the brightest angel in heaven decides to take a smashing holiday down on earth, through the force of his sheer disobedience, wouldn't you leave your mud-created husband and join him for the party of your life? Sounds tempting. Others say that she returned to heaven in the guise of a snake that tempted Eve to bite from the apple that ultimately led to her and Adam's expulsion from heaven. So this idea of this beautiful, shining, magnetic, lovable force that ultimately gets expelled tends to run through the mythology of Lilith. But once again, we have very little information. None of the ancient texts like the Torah or the Talmud actually mention her description at length. Most of the time she appears as the angel Leliel, the handmaiden of the Assyro-Babylonian goddess Inanna or Ishtar. In some cases, she is associated with the demon Lelutu. In others, she appears as the night sky itself, a presence of darkness which naturally occurred. So the fact that we have such little information on Lilith makes us project a lot of our life experiences and a lot of our own psychological content onto her image. In Christianity, we have this really awful divide where we tend to think of women as either the substitute of Madonna or the substitute of a whore. We tend to have this whole Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene kind of disassociation, when in reality, we all know that women are much more complex than just pointing them as the lusty, seductive enchantress or the dedicated mother who is modest to a fault and self-denying in every possible way. Lilith on the spectrum tends to fall more into the temptress, enchantress, kind of like extreme femme fatale vibe. But initially, I do want you guys to keep in mind that she is described as this screeching owl and was usually seen sleeping in the ruins of forgotten cities, like for example, the ruins of Babylon after it was destroyed. So Lilith is initially associated with a lot of things that were meant to block human beings from having unsatisfactory gender relationships. For example, she is used in a way to scare a lot of people into following certain social norms, such as mothers should never separate from their children because if they do, then Lilith is going to take their child and eat it or couples should never sleep apart because if they do, then Lilith is going to sweep into the marital bed and make love to the husband and completely destroy the wife. Or the funniest to my mind, men should refrain from fiddling with themselves too much because if they do that, they end up copulating with Lilith and their soul is gone for life. In ancient Semitic times, she was seen as a force that was meant to discipline people into doing things that were supposed to be collective, 
collective that we're promoting together in us, whatever was outside of this, whatever independent behavior transgressed, the normal social rule was seen as demonic. Now, the funny thing, and a lot of scholars actually describe this, is that more recently, due to the popularity of comic books in America, Lilith has been associated with this empowering superhero female energy. She's been taking from the vault of history, which associated her with something dark and sexualized and lusty and primal. This beast, this vampire, this succubus that sucks the life out of a person. And she's been transformed into this Marvel-esque comic character that swoops in and saves the day. And actually I did a bit of research on this and to my fascination I'm not a big comic book buff but you can see here a couple of covers the representation of how Lilith was depicted in comic books in America. I want you guys to keep in mind that the Lilith that we see popularized now nowadays in the spiritual community is this commercialized version of the original myth of Lilith. I personally want to tell you right now my own perspective as an astrologer. We can begin by looking at the fact that in astrology Lilith is an asteroid. You see here the glyph and you see here the number. If you type this number 1181 into any of the chart creators out there, you will see that Lilith appears in your birth chart and you can see the house and the sign in which it finds itself. So astrologically speaking, she is a metal asteroid that actually can be found in the asteroid belt between the planets Mars and Jupiter, which is fascinating because this borrows a little bit from the traits in the ways in which she is represented in the collective. Lilith is usually represented as aggressive, sexy, ambitious to a fault. I mean, we need to keep in mind that this was a demon that was was considered to have risen up to the gates of heaven to challenge God itself. So you do require a certain degree of courage and I guess hubris to be able to do so. So Jupiter and Mars tell us of this interesting influence where she can be associated with a force of destruction and evil and ruination, but at the same time she's also an emblem of growth, empowerment and independence. Now if I were to combine my psychological knowledge with astrology, I would actually interpret Lilith from the point of view of our shadow self. To my mind, rather than seeing her as a demon or as a comic book heroine, Lilith is actually a deep aspect of our psychological shadow self. She represents the totality of feminine aspects that we are taught from a very young age to suppress as women. So she is an unconscious aspect of ourself that either is very prominently figured in our chart, for example, let's say when you have Lilith conjunct the Ascendant, Lilith conjunct the Sun, Lilith smack on your north node. These are points that constantly keep your Lilith activated in your chart or they could be activated by transits or by synastry. When you meet a partner, most likely a romantic or sexual partner, whose planets strongly activate your Lilith by conjunction squares and oppositions. The trines and the sextiles are harmonious aspects, so I'm not going to delve too much into that. Actually, I'm not going to talk too much of the aspects in this clip. I'm going to talk more about the sign and the houses where you can find Lilith. Coming back to the idea that Lilith is a part of our shadow self. The glyph that you actually see here just represents the glyph of the specific asteroid, but in a birth chart, you would see see Lilith represented through a different symbol, one that looks like a crescent moon on top of a cross. To me, also, she kind of reminds me of a sailor moon wand. But anyway, coming back to the interpretation of this symbol. So the crescent moon is the symbol of the unconscious that is being materialized through the burden and the responsibility implied by the cross into the material plane. Another interesting fact about Lilith is that she takes about nine months to transit through a specific constellation. Recently, we've seen the switch of Lilith in the material eternal and nurturing sign of Cancer into the sign of Leo on the 9th of January. Well, we're going to have Lilith and Leo for the next nine months. And nine months is also the span that it takes for a woman to gestate a child into her womb, which is interesting because again, we go back to the association of Lilith with this idea that she is 
a creature that appears in the night to devour freshly born children. Not only that, but she also takes roughly nine years to go through all of the 12 astrological signs. And nine years is also roughly the period of time that a Venusian synodic cycle usually takes, which is basically just a fancy way to describe how Venus moves around the sun in the shape of flower patterns. Let's move on now to discuss your Lilith return. So the Lilith return is basically a period in time when transiting Lilith, so Lilith in the sky at the moment, might fit into your natal Lilith. So for example, let's say you have Lilith in Leo in your birth chart, and at the moment Lilith has just entered by transit the sign of Leo. This means you are on the cusp of your Lilith return. And I'm very happy to tell you this, but also a little bit mortified. Certain dark aspects will come to play in your life in an unconscious way. And your task is going to be to be able to identify them rather than sweep them under the rug so you can get control over this energy rather than to allow it to carry you into some pretty difficult personal, romantic, and sexual dynamics. So some things that you might need to reflect upon when Lilith returns in your chart are the following. How are you owning your sexuality? What about your darker instincts? How comfortable are you with your instincts? Have you met your shadow self? Are you ready to dive deep into the underworld of your behaviors and repeated patterns? What is crumbling in your life through your own efforts? And how might you be bringing ruin into other people's lives? How could the ego get the best of you at times? So these are just some of the questions that you might need to reflect upon during your Lilith return in order to make the unconscious content that play in your life more conscious and thereby get control over it. Because you guys know that wherever we bring up from our psyche to the bright light of awareness is something that can heal us and truly empower us. More than, let's say, wearing a a leotard fancy suit and some bright red lipstick can empower you. The good part about your Lilith return is that if you do not enjoy reflecting on such topics, it only lasts nine months. So it's basically the span of the conception of a human life and then you're done with it. You don't have to think so strongly about it unless Lilith is actually making a nasty opposition or square after it was conjunct your specific placement in the birth chart. So I don't really like to gender things, but I am going to do it. In the following, I have to talk to you a little bit about how you can interpret Lilith in the chart of a man different than in a chart of a woman or adapted to nowadays types of relationships and identities, somebody that identifies as male and somebody that identifies as female. So in the chart of a man or a person who identifies as male, the Lilith placement shows the type of woman who can drive him to obsessions and financial and spiritual ruination. He might say something of the kind of, I crave you so much, I would instigate war or throw all my money away to have you. By her nature, Lilith energy is withholding. It pertains to a form of selfishness that helps her survive and do as she pleases. It can also leave a lot of physical hurt and emotional damage in her wake since her energy is all about breaking the links that connect us, the ties that bind us. She is famous for her relentless ambition and what we call it in my country affectionately as having tupeu or lots of balls. I mean, she is, as I said earlier, the kind of demon that flew up to the gates of heaven to challenge God. In a woman's chart, Lilith becomes embedded as an aspect of her own energy, and it may lie dormant if Lilith is unexpected by other planets or left to her own devices in a zodiac house, but she truly comes alive when a personal planet conjunct, squares, or opposes her, or when the transit of an outer planet activates her from her ash and sleep. This is a reference to the fact that Lilith tends to fly into spaces of destruction and is believed to sleep in the ashes of ruin. If you're a non-binary individual, you could choose an interpretation of the two Lilith that fits with what you have experienced in your life based on her energy in your chart. I mean, we all have Lilith somewhere in our natal chart. Or Lilith could work in your life through the force of how others project their insecurities onto you, much like Lilith challenged the angels. Who are also genderless creatures with presumably hermaphrodite parts. So in a non-binary chart, Lilith could be the force of other people or the unconscious collective out to get you for being non-conforming. Some astrologers usually would associate Lilith with Mars and Pluto energy, a linked Mars-Pluto aspect, 
Other astrologers have noticed that women who have Lilith in any rough aspect to Mars, Pluto, or Saturn tend to become victims of rape. But I don't want to alarm you. That doesn't mean to say that such awful things will happen in your own chart. It just is the propensity towards drama, ruination. So you just have to keep in mind that if you have certain aspects in your birth chart that pertain to the placements I just described, be a little bit more careful with the company you entertain, with the place you visit and with how you choose to express yourself. The thing is that Lilith tends to make you want to break out, want to challenge things, want to be argumentative and aggressive in moments when you might do better to just pick your battles. But that's the whole vibe and energy of Lilith. So it's kind of a tricky energy to work with, but nonetheless, I do think it's useful. In popular media, you would see depictions of Lilith energy, very strong Lilith energy, in such personalities such as Angelina Jolie, who has Lilith and Pisces in the 8th house, or one of my personal all-time favorite singers, the British singer PJ Harvey, who has a very strong Lilith in Cancer. I also personally think that women who have Lilith in Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces are are some of the most strongest Liliths that they're out there because their intuition, which is normally quite strong, is infused with this dark instincts and this natural sexuality that water energy brings through. So this wild feminine archetype that Lilith represents in a water sign can be quite dramatic and impactful. Okay, all this being said, let's get to the part that I guess you're most excited to hear about. Let's find out how Lilith Lilith works through each of the zodiac signs and the houses. As an astrologer, from my experience and my education, I identify Lilith as an astrological energy according to three points. So to me, Lilith can be associated with A, the energy of powerful desire, B, dark instincts, greed, ambition, and intense sexuality, and C, obsession. So keeping this frame of reference in mind with these three characteristics that I think best describe Lilith's energy in a natal chart, I'm going to take this and apply it to the description of Lilith from Aries into Pisces or from the first house into the 12th house. Lilith in Aries or Lilith in the first house. So predominantly, I'm going to be talking here about the natal placement, but feel free to consider it by transit or in synastry as well. So this basically means that if we apply the three aspects that I mentioned previously, the theme of obsession, dark instincts, and powerful desire to the first house, we would get a very fierce warrior type of energy. So the first house is the air of the things you attract, how your identity is beginning to be shaped based on your life experience. It is the realm of your conscious mind and ego identity. With planets here, you loudly proclaim, I am. And when Lilith resides here, well, she brings the energy of intense sexual charisma, dark instincts, and powerful ambitions to your conscious identity. Since this is a highly visible house, everyone is able to pick up on your Lilith-colored aura, so people will respond to you in rather dramatic ways. Repulsion and rejection followed by obsession and strong attraction could be your typical everyday experiences. The energy here is similar to a Pluto transit. If this energy is not acknowledged, it will show up in the types of people you will attract, some darkly sexy, ambitious, but ruthless individuals. Similar to a Lilith in Aries, the motto of a first house Lilith is I am ruination. I rest in the ashes of what I have destroyed. Lilith in the second house or Lilith in Taurus. We apply the themes that I mentioned previously, obsession, powerful desire and dark instincts to the realm of food, security, resources, money, and material possessions. Lilith in the second house colors your workplace interactions with a sexy tinge and even a darker twist. You want money, a powerful position at work, and a beautiful body, and you will stop at nothing to get these things. This is a highly sensual and stubborn house, and it usually shows someone who has a low, sultry voice or fine skin 
skin, a person with good vision and beautiful long eyelashes, or a robust body and curvy attractive features, Lilith here weaponizes the senses. Whereas Venus here can revel into her sensual beauty, Lilith brings the edge by making the native wonder, how can I use all I have to get even more? Lilith here also produces in the native some deep fears of prostitution, becoming a crone or being disfigured. Lilith here can also bring up the fear of being trapped in a job or marriage where you need to trade your beauty, body and freedom for power, safety and protection. So similar to Lilith in Taurus, Lilith in the second house motto would be trust no one. I take what is mine but also what is yours because everyone has a price. Lilith in the third house or in Gemini. So again, we apply the same frame of reference, the theme of obsession, dark instincts and powerful desire to the third house, the house of the mind, the siblings, the neighborhood, primary schooling and your relationship to the environment. Lilith in the third house brings with it an obsession with communication. Lilith here can use her words as weapons and as sexual elixirs. She gaslights, manipulates and instigates gossips that can ruin a person when provoked. When tamed, she teaches the younger generation about reproductive rights and how to become large-scale whistleblowers. Lilith in the third house is the prototype of the sensual librarian who hides some important pieces of evidence or the influencer who uses a large platform or a podcast to deliver some shocking truths. Similar to Lilith in Gemini, Lilith in the third house's motto is Believe nothing you hear or what others say. I'll get you eventually to think my own way and I can use your ignorance to fuel my ambition. Lilith in the fourth house or Lilith in Cancer. So again, we apply the themes of obsession, dark instincts and deep desires towards fourth house related matters. So this means your nation, your roots, your cultural sense of belonging, your sense of safety, the womb-like environment you experienced at home, your house your relationship to your mother. With Lilith here, you need to get comfy with entertaining some pretty dark emotions if you are to understand the core of who you are. Your connection to your mother and lineage might also be one of wild feminine energy, witchcraft and being typecasted as demon women or devilish women and having that role then used against you for sexual abuse. There were a lot of emotional trauma incurred through abuses to your independence, capacity to feel safe in the world, to become mother and actually enjoy raising your offspring. Womb curses are possible here and you need to use Lilith's energy to banish them. Abortions or infanticide might have occurred as a means to gain emotional control or to enter or exit oppressive family dynamics. For example, a penniless woman who gets pregnant to trap a man to marry her and then envies her daughter for being born into the wealth she never could have of her own. Hating her daughter, she then raises a person who hates herself and having children. An integrated live in this part of the chart is a woman that foregoes becoming a mother in order to make the whole collective her children. She nourishes them through art, through therapy and healing. Similar to Lilith in Cancer, Lilith's in the fourth house motto would be survive at all costs and love no one. Lilith in the fifth house or Lilith in Leo. So again, we apply the themes of obsession, dark instincts and powerful desires to the fifth house energy. And this would be your skills, your connection to the divine, the way in which you radiate light in your surroundings, your leadership abilities, your capacity to express yourself into the world. Lilith here brings ego issues, but also sudden moments of insight and awareness as you could experience many ego deaths. This is the house of light, skills, performance, and a deep connection to the divine. It is after all ruled by Solar Leo. So Lilith here is rather weak by herself, but she becomes magnified under the glare, applauses and opprobrium of the public. Basically Lilith here is vanquished by the divine when on her own she is modest and subdued. 
But when someone compliments you for your skills, when you fall in love or when you spend time relaxing or doing things, you actually enjoy Lilith's awakening. And many times she will bring out her darkness, adding a sexy edge to your otherwise normal activities by inflating your ego as it soaks up the adoration of fans, followers, and the public. Becoming a ruthless matriarch is also possible with such a transit, since the fifth house is also symbolically the house of children. So much like Lilith and Leo, Lilith in the fifth house motto would be, I am the darkest light and never be outshined by anyone. Okay, we reached the sixth house. So this is the realm of Lilith in Virgo or Lilith in the sixth house. The sixth house deals with things such as our daily routines, our everyday co-workers and work environment, our capacity to establish a healthy sense of, I feel okay in my body, I feel vital and energized. But side note, this has also been known traditionally to be considered the house of witchcraft together with the 8th house. If the 8th house deals with the house of spirits and souls from an occult point of view, the 6th house is the practical house that shows you what spells, what objects you can use to summon spirits, to deal with them, to exorcise people or to enhance your magic abilities. This is a complicated one because traditionally the sixth house is the zodiac apothecary, the house of witchcraft, spells, potion, cures, ointments, alchemy, and improving your health by doing repetitive daily tasks. So Lilith in this house would be the dark medic, the one that might use certain spells to control other people's energies and their souls, the one who can slip some dark poisonous aspects into cures and ointments, the one who might like to pull the strings softly behind the scenes and make you feel like you are in control of your life when actually she's in control of your daily events to the minute detail. Lilith and Virgo here could be manifested in a mother or a parent or even in your own energy as needing to take care of somebody that you constantly want to make weak, somebody that you want to keep in a vulnerable state and thereby constantly nurture back to good health so that that person will always be thankful and grateful to you while you gradually take more and more control over their life. When integrated well, Lilith in Virgo or Lilith in the sixth house is the doula that saves women from blunted abortions, is the person that steps in and takes care of women tummy aches and stomach problems when nobody else would give them some first aid medical treatment. This is the house of the witch that works towards the light rather than towards the dark. So similar to Lilith and Virgo, Lilith in the sixth house motto would be, I control your vitality. You are what I make you to be. The light has changed because it's taken me most of my day to make this video for you guys, so I hope you're enjoying it. We are at Lilith in the seventh house or Lilith in Libra. So we take the themes of dark instincts, deep desires and obsession and we apply them to seventh house matters. The seventh house is the shadow zone. It is how other people perceive us. It is the house of our relatives, our friends, our marriage partner, the business contracts we sign or the social contracts we get into, whether they are verbal or written agreements. So how does Lilith color this energy? A Lilith and Libra shows a person that would unconsciously try to seduce in order to get their way in life. This is the energy of a woman that, for example, might want to benefit from the money, the power, and the clout of her spouse through association with that person. This is all about relational control, the domination of family members, while Lilith goes out and does as she pleases, shrouded in secrecy. Oftentimes, Lilith and Libra also likes to bend the hand of the law, because the law is an inherently a patriarchal institution and Lilith doesn't really care so much about these common peasantly human laws. So she soars above regulations and can easily cheat and deceive people through the contracts that they might sign with her. A Lilith in Libra gives also an incredible magnetism. If you have this position in your chart, you pull into your aura a great number of lovers 
and they tend to perceive you in a really positive light because the Venusian outward quality of a Lilith and Libra can be quite treacherous. Lilith and Libra looks innocent, sweet, and down for a good game. She enjoys communicating, but beneath that facade lies a person with steely ambition and incredible determination. She can talk her way out of any conundrum, and oftentimes she uses her charms and beauty to truly blind justice. Similar to Lilith and Libra, Lilith in the seventh house's motto is I can achieve anything with my beautiful looks and if justice is not forthcoming, I take the law into my own hands. Lilith in the eighth house or Lilith in Scorpio. So again, we take the energy of repressed anger or dark instincts, the energy of powerful desire and obsession, and we apply it to eighth house issues. And the eighth house, again, similar to the sixth house, is the house of witchcraft, the house of the occult, the house of blood, sugar, sex, and magic, similar to the Red Hot Chili Peppers famous album, as I like to think of it. This is the area of the chart that is the most obscure and Lilith really thrives in this environment. All hail the mother of all Liliths, the primal creator itself, the original sin wrapped in the body of an incredibly arousing, sexually powerful and ultra magnetic woman. A Lilith in Scorpio works upon you on a limbic level. She touches your nerves from a distance, magnetizes you and pulls you in to do her bidding. Lilith and Scorpios are such powerful individuals, not only because the quality of the eighth house represent the darkest, most occult house of the zodiac, that place where magic, sex, blood, lust reside within, the place where ancestral curses, deeply shared intimacy, but also the capacity to enact phenomenal soul hearing, to bind and unbind souls from past karmic contracts lies within. So a Lilith and Scorpio is powerful because she is watery and it's very hard to contain water. When water is in a large amount, it can overcome any obstacle by going around it, underneath it. It is so hard to contain. And Lilith here is dark water, operating on you on a pragmatic physical level, but also on an unconscious level. You do her bidding not necessarily because she told you so, but because you cannot help yourself. She instills obsession in the hearts of those she wants to take in. But when used properly, this Lilith is a shamaness, a medicine person that is able to bring back from the dead sin eaters and completely change them into light workers. This is the mother of all transformatory experiences. She's able to give people incredibly arousing orgasms, but also keep them coming back for more in order to serve her vengeful plans. Similar to a Lilith in Scorpio, Lilith in the eighth house's motto would would be I own you, mind, body and soul and resistance to my charms and power is simply futile. Lilith in the ninth house or Lilith in Sagittarius. This is a really funny pairing. It can lead to almost clownish-esque renditions of Lilith because we take the energy of deep desire, dark instincts and obsession and we apply it to the house of faith, the house of friendship, the house of higher power and most importantly of all, the house of freedom. So a Lilith in the ninth house is a ruthless seeker of her freedom. Let's see how it is described. A Lilith in Sagittarius is the wild hunter of opportunities. This Lilith is incredibly fierce and protective of her freedom. She will go to great lengths to completely dissociate herself from her family, friends and original roots in order to pursue her path without compromises. This Lilith realizes towards the second part of her life how important it is to find anchor in those very things that nurtured you and she usually goes on the path 
path of the prodigal son returning home with honors, adventures, and lots of interesting life experiences to put into practice in her local community. She is wild, she is free, she is incredibly vociferous, but she may also suffer from foot-in-the-mouth syndrome. And usually, this whistle-blowing ability of hers gets her into epic problems, but she emerges out of every ruined situation triumphant and victorious because she was the only one that was in on the divine joke. A Lilith in Sagittarius can also summon wild beasts, can be incredibly fierce in getting to the instinctual side of household pets. She summons an atavist primal need back into the light from every pet, plant or living subject. She's truly a force to reckon with because when challenged she stares straight at you without fear and asks you how do you want to be completely dismantled. Similar to Lilith in Sagittarius, a Lilith in the ninth house's motto would be luck favors the mad and the bold. And I once challenged heaven, so people are now my personal playground. Lilith in the 10th house or Lilith in Capricorn. We take the framework, we apply obsession, dark instincts and deep desires to the house of the public, of professionalism, of climbing the career ladder, of finding your way within the patriarchal structure, the hierarchical nature of social relationships. Well, you can understand that Lilith loves to create chaos in this particular house. Lilith in Capricorn ensnares you at work. This this is the sign of the political Machiavellian leader. She has some phenomenal power that have to do with professional organization, planning, scheduling, scheming, and also walking over the heads of the crushed enemies that dared to compete with her. She is incredibly astute, detail-oriented, efficient, and oh boy, does she have stamina. Lilith in Capricorn is not somebody you want to mess with. This is not a contender that you can bring down so easily. She has the force of Saturn, the devil, whom she allegedly worships behind her. So she is packed full of sarcastic ways in which she can bring you down, throw your profession in front of your face, and revel in the ruination of your career gone up in smokes. When used properly, this Lilith can train the new generation of leaders to serve both light and dark goals. She is ridiculously sensual and is able to focus a lot of her attention on a achieving pragmatic goals. This Lilith has the wonderful capacity to be able to rebuild from her ashes. Similar to Lilith in Capricorn, a Lilith in the 10th house's motto is nobody does anything better than me and to reach any goals of mine, the end justifies the means. Okay, Lilith in the 11th house or Lilith in Aquarius, the most unpredictable Liliths of them all. We apply the theme of deep desires, dark instincts and obsession to the house of the collective, social groups, people coming together as groups of co-workers, teams, unions, all sorts of collective encounters. This is the house of teaching, of giving to the people, of interacting with the public at large. It is also the house of technology and any computer mediated ways in which we can connect to other people. A Lilith in Aquarius bears the deepest burden because she struggles so heavily with her demonic shadowy side. Aquarius by definition rules the sky and the heavens and when Lilith, the demon, enters into this area and into the sign, she brings deep mental conflict, broken jagged communications and a sense of chaos that cannot be contained. She can bring obsessive social networks and and social groups that could work against the individual to disempower the bearer of the Lilith mark. Lilith in Aquarius also has a problem with embodiment and having a body, being in a body, taking care of the daily things such as eating and going to the toilet and washing because mostly Aquarius likes to live in the mind, enjoys escaping reality through sheer thinking, philosophizing, playing computer games, but also being in this world where it's more of a case of communicating very deeply with people on a soul level rather than actually sitting around dealing with pragmatic everyday details. 
Contrary to Lilith in Capricorn, her neighbor, Lilith in Aquarius is the one that very easily can bring things down, can destroy them and provoke deep tower moments into people's lives. And she sits and witnesses her own destruction with the innocence of a child, not really believing or understanding that she is capable of such vile energy. Having suffered at the hands of the groups around her, Lilith bears the mark of the one that has been tainted, the one that has been outcast, and she takes this role and makes out of it a full blossoming creative career, leaving behind the most bizarre and imaginative legacy that you have witnessed. Similar to Lilith in Aquarius, Lilith's in the 11th house's motto is instantly shift your frame of mind, whether you like it or not. And also, I am your best partner in crime. And the final one, last but never least, because to my mind, Lilith in Pisces, much like Lilith in Cancer and Lilith in Scorpio, are some of the most powerful Liliths out there. So, Lilith in the 12th house. We apply the themes of obsession, dark instincts, and deep desires to the 12th house. This is the house of letting things go, forgiveness, a strong connection to the divine. It is the house of secrets, of keeping things inside, repressed. It is the house of the deep unconscious and the house where we usually come to rest and to end certain things in our lives. Lilith and Pisces is the prototype of the siren that beckons you with weeping eyes towards her. She's frail, she's vulnerable, and as soon as you look away or blink twice, she pulls you to the depths of the oceans and devours you. This is a woman who can use a victim mentality like a weapon against you and against anyone who dares challenge her sensitivity. She protects herself by attacking first. She's incredibly impulsive and emotional and she can use art as a form of destruction or complete absolution. Similar to a Lilith in Cancer and a Lilith in Scorpio, Lilith in Pisces takes on religious dogma and gives it a demonic snare. She can get people to follow blindly in her steps, inspired by some sort of spiritual or religious frenzy. When used properly, Lilith in Pisces is able to break through patriarchal indoctrination and old-fashioned dogmatic beliefs. She's able to carve her own path and maybe create her own religion as well. She can make dreams come true, whether these are erotic orgasmic dreams or the stuff that your nightmares are made of. Similar to Lilith in Pisces, Lilith in the 12th house's motto would be, catch me if you can, and I only believe in the divine within me. That's it. It's a wrap up. That's my take on Lilith, at least for the time being. I am aware that there are a couple of books out there. They sound super interesting on the topic of Lilith. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to get them in time for this video, but I have them on my reading list. So let me know, guys, if you are interested in an update. I could share with you some of the wisdom pearls that I garner from reading those specific books. In the meantime, I do need to remind you that I am a certified astrologer and I offer astrological services. If you click the second link in the description box below, it will take you to my website and you can see a variety of options and prices. My services are affordable and people have been continuously ordering from me for the last two to three years. I just, I just absolutely love working with you guys and I love learning from the story of your birth charts. I offer a love report. I offer an astrological transit report and of course the classic personal birth chart interpretation. So feel free to have a look at that if you feel like it. If you don't feel like it and this is where I leave you then thank you so much for listening. I truly honor your presence here and I cannot wait to come back at you with another clip. See you next time. Mwah!